This year's nominees for the Specialty Marius Award for Best Indie Game Music. Year Walk by Daniel Olson. Waka Melee by Rom DePrisco and Peter Chapman. Towerfall Ascension by Alec Hollowa. Ridiculous Fishing by Eirik Sirk. Desktop Dungeons by Danny Baranowski and Grant Kirkhope. Brothers, A Tale of Two Sons by Gustav Grefberg. And Banner Saga by Austin Wintory. And the winner of this year's Marius Award is Desktop Dungeons by Danny oh, Baranowski hey, hey, hey. and Grant Yay. Kirkhope. <laughs> Congratulations, guys. Absolutely fantastic. I can't believe it. Tell you what, this is the first award I've ever won in my entire career. And I'll Take that, Austin Wintory. Yeah, take that, Austin. You know, like, <laughs> Daddy's won stuff before, but I've never actually won anything. I've been nominated for stuff, but never won ever. Anything. I find that so difficult to believe. I didn't even... It's true. <laughs> that's, that's crazy. Well, I mean, that's, that's an honor on my part, then, to be giving you this award. It was really hard to pick this year, guys. I'm not going to lie. It was, uh, it was a tough... Yeah, those are all good. Those are all good ones, man. Yeah, really good. Good yeah. list. Yeah. yeah. Except, for, except for Austin, again, I need to reiterate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was kind of on autopilot with that one. A little lame, yeah. man. <laughs> we love have to say, Dr. Austin's a great guy. He really is. Love him. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, guys, congratulations again. It's such a well-deserved award. The, the score is so unique and quirky and fun. I wanted to, to ask you guys a few questions about working on it, but before I do that, I just want to talk a little bit about the game and how you ended up on it, because as far as I understand, it's actually been around in one form or another since like 2010, and now it's sort of more official. So what, what happened? I mean, how, how early on were you guys involved? Yeah, they made a, story. yeah I mean, they made an alpha uh, back a long time ago, and they won the uh, Design Award at IGF, I think, like 2010. Um, and then from there, they decided to... Um, kind of make a full version uh, from there and took years and years to flush it out and give it like a metagame and all that kind of stuff. And um, at some point um, I just, I hit them up and I was like, Hey, who's doing your music? And they're like, you are, <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> uh, okay. And so I started doing some stuff and um, you know, it was, it was a long development process. So it kind of, it was a lot of music over kind of a long time. It's not like, movies or you know movies sometimes you have to do like a whole score in like three weeks six right. weeks whatever like crazy time games take a long time to make especially indie games and yeah. so like halfway through you know a couple you know probably almost a year or so after i had started i met grant again at uh um magfest and our our friendship and our love was was blossoming and <laughs> i said i said hey grant uh hey grant you're so cool grant and uh i said <laughs> <laughs> i said uh you want to do like a guest track or something because like this was this was still i think it was the second time i had met grant and so we weren't like um i don't know i was just like throwing it out there like hey legendary game composer who i listened to your music when i was growing up all the time and and i love you and and love me back please do you want to do like a track or something he's like yeah all right sure i'll do one track and uh <laughs> yeah, next thing like, you knew he stole the show right I'll right. Start. No, I didn't. I mean, it's mostly him. Like, I, this was a big scam for me because, like, we split the money and he did like 95% of the work. So it worked out. Oh, yeah. He's my, he's my mule. It was like, I, I just, I think I was just doing the the DLC for um, Kingdoms of Amalur Reckoning. I'd, I'd done the main game. It was like, I think it was like February 2012 when I got involved in it. And I just started on the, I'm sure was, I just started on the, the DLC pack for the for that game. And then Danny just said, you know, do you want to do a guest track? And I was like, of course, it'd be great fun. Yeah, you were bored. So, I mean, that's not like that was a exactly. lot of work or anything. So. <laughs> so like I did that track, I think it's called Complete Kingdom, which is like the cut of that the sort of main tuny one. And yeah. then and then I lost that MIDI file. And when we came to, re to, to, to get <laughs> going, I had to do it all over again, which is a bit of a pain in the ass. Well, I just thought it was funny that like I'm working on this game for like a year. I'm like, hey, do a guest track. He does one track and it's like, OK, that's the main theme now. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Grant. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we spoke. We were supposed to do sort of um, he Danny would do a track, and then I'd do an old version of that track, and then I'd do a track, and he'd do an old version of my track, and so we kind of did that for a little while. But and that was the plan for the whole game, but we got just kind of run out of time towards the end, so we ended up just dashing through and just try getting one track done each. 
Well, see, what I, what I really like about it is that I can't, I mean, as I'm listening through it, if I'm not looking at, um, you know, the metadata closely, it, it all sounds like you've, you've come together as far as the sound. It's not like there's a very clear distinction between who did um, yeah. what, like you might expect. And that's awesome. I mean, I, that's why I was wondering how collaboratively you worked on it, because it sounds almost as if you were, you know, working quite closely uh, as far as, you know, the same sound libraries and things like that. This was, too. this was one of the first, like, this is one of the most in-depth collaborations I've ever done. So like, yeah, me too. I didn't really have like a, a, you know, we were just kind of feeling it out. And like, um, there was a lot of like, you know, I had done stuff and then he would do stuff and go back and forth. And like he was saying, we kind of got into this rhythm where it was like, okay, we need a, a variety of tracks for different locations and stuff, but we want some variety in the locations too. So I'll do a deserty kind of track. And I was like, Grant, just, do something like this, but like alternate, like a like a remix, like a rearrangement. I don't not not even that, like not even the same melodic data, not even the same like just riffing off know. the same concept. Right, make something like an alternate version. We just called them alts, and so that's kind of how it went for a while, and that's how we just started like populating tracks, and we got to the point where we had I think like eight or ten tracks where it was just like okay, I did a d desert one, then he riffed off it and did one, then he did one, he did creep like caverns, which was supposed to be. Uh, cold lonely scary kind of thing real ambient totally like, uh my personality yeah yeah <laughs> well it was like i it was it reminded me of seven eye surface from golden eye because you know i was like 12 when that came out and it was awesome right. and now i now i can look back on it and be like what was i thinking but um <laughs> but so then i but so i would make uh, an alt based on his and then so we got a bunch of tracks and so through that process, we kind of like created this pool of like, okay, this is like the desktop dungeon sound. Uh, and then from there, then it was like, there were some where Den of Danger, I think is, what, what did we end up calling that one? I don't know. But the, the okay. one that plays in uh, Den of Danger was probably the most directly collaborative one where like he wrote it, then he sent it to me with MIDI data and we started consolidating our libraries and stuff. Right. But I, I, I want. I don't want to say I redid a lot of it. I just like I kind of like did my own thing on the percussion. I added like harmonizing string lines and all this kind of weird stuff. That one is definitely to me like the most both of us. Right. Um, yeah. I think, I think and so, so the, yeah, right. And so it ended up just being this cool like mix between uh, uh, individual ones we had done, and it's kind of like thirds, like a third me, a third him, and a third both of us. But yeah. It was a really cool way to do it, and I think it's how I would do it from now on. Well, it sounds like you've you've collaborated in a in a way that doesn't happen that often because normally when we you know when there's been multiple composers on a score and we ask them you know like how did you collaborate and they basically tend to say uh, we didn't you know he was in his cave and I was in my cave and you know they right. threw the music together so this is actually um, to me at least it's nice to hear that you guys actually not only work together but like you know know each other have seen each other we're in the same <laughs> cave <laughs> or, yeah. you know. I think that because me and Danny we, we are genuinely good friends even though we do tend to uh, you know, know take the mic at each other all the time but like we're you know we really get on well together and it was i was really sort of honored when danny asked me to do it in the first place and i only really planned on doing one track and like he said at the start we had we had different sample libraries so my stuff didn't sound like that so danny would do i'd write a track but then danny would like take the midi file and, and do it again with, with all his sounds so he, he kind of did double the work at the start right and then and then towards the end i bought the libraries that he had and so and also we were so rushed at the end that some of the tracks went in just straight from my sound library because we've got the same libraries and we're right and we're so used to kind of used to writing in the same style that I don't think you can tell now like you say it was like even even sometimes if I did not wrote it I couldn't tell who did what sometimes so I think we're I don't know just we just really do get on really well together and it was like you know and we're not scared to say that's rubbish do it again and you say the same thing to me and not be right. offended not be right. offended by it, you know so it's been well, really I, I think you I think uh he always gets weird when I say this but like I uh I think part of what helped this along is that like I genuinely like was raised by a lot of his music. Like I grew up listening to Perfect Dark and uh, Goldeneye and um, whatever okay. else you did. I can't even remember. Okay, so I'll let you in on a little secret here. My whole award choice comes right. down to mostly that exact same thing. So last year I chose Matt Ullman for Diablo because he scored that half of my childhood. Yeah. And now this year <laughs> it's you guys because uh, right. I'm in the same boat. Um, I'm, I'm half joking, but still, I, I sympathize with, no. with where you're coming from with that. Right. No, right. So it's like, you know, I, I'm, you know, we, we joke around and stuff and like, I, I called my daddy and weird stuff like that. It gets pretty weird and awesome. But like, <laughs> like genuinely, like, um, and, you know, and he had told me 
uh, that like he listened to my stuff and he liked my stuff. So it seemed like he was familiar with my stuff too. But like, just like when he would write tracks based on mine, it was just such this weird like mix of like, wow, this is a guy writing music based on my music, which was informed by me listening to his music when I was a kid. And just, you know what I mean? Like, that, yeah, yeah. It, at a point, you just, it's just like, you can talk about it and try to rationalize it, but it's just like, it's awesome. Uh, we, we kind of have, we definitely have distinct writing styles, but we, I think we do things a somewhat similar way. Uh, yeah, I think, I think where so. we're, we're really about the melodies, um, you know, more so than like the sound programming, all that kind of stuff. And, and I think that helped us gel together. Well, I think the synergy is very evident um, wh when you actually, you know, listen to it and, and, and feel it in the game. It, it just, it fits, you know, and that's really cool to have come from two different people with two different musical voices. Uh, and yet you managed to really pull it together in this way. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think we really wanted to make sure that, you know, I'm a, you know, I've said it a million times, but I mean, I'm such a believer in melody and I'm sick of the kind of the lack of melody we seem to get in tons of things these days. It really annoys me. And so... And I know Danny feels the same way. So we were adamant wanted to write something that was, you know, memorable and tuneful and all that stuff that, you know, composers like to do or used to like to do, you know, years gone by. So that's that was such a big deal for us to try to get some nice tunes that people would like and and in that kind of style that was kind of, you know, orchestral and all the rest of it. And, you know, I just I just think that we both had such a similar idea about it that it just was it was a real pleasure to do it. It was like great fun and we got on great, we had great fun doing it and it was just, you know, it was a, uh, we're really proud of it. I think we're, we're really proud of what we achieved in the end. Yeah, definitely. And, and you got to, I mean, we got to, you got to give credit to QCF. They were really good to work with. They're very uh, open-minded, but also clear about what they want. You know, sometimes it's not just necessarily game developers, but whenever you're contracting music for somebody, I'm like, I'm sure, uh, you know, like it's with creative things like, oh, we need this to be more epic, right? Like you, you, you get that kind of thing where you, you, you want to have people who know what they want, but respect the fact that they hired you for your expertise. Exactly. And, and we definitely, we had that. Like they would, one of the swamp tracks, uh, I remember one of them, one of them was, uh, they, they said it was like too magical at one part. And, I, and, and, and he was really good about like explaining what he meant and all that kind of stuff and that kind of communication. So, um, you know, it's just really good to have uh, people who will know how to toe that line between I want these guys to do what I want because I'm the game developer and I know what I want better than anybody, but also I don't make music. So, you know, well, one of it sounds like they gave you a fair bit of creative freedom because while you were talking about developing the sound, it wasn't really like, Oh yeah. Then they said we had to do this. And then they said, you know, it was, it sounds like you guys had quite a bit of freedom as far as developing and presenting that sound to them. I think the reason for that, though, is like the gameplay, like uh, you've played it. Uh, so, you know, that like yeah. um, we had a lot of um, free reign just because the gameplay is completely uh, there's no time element like you play. It's like Minesweeper. You click right. when you want to click. And so we had this opportunity to say, OK, here's the, the, my, my favorite track that I did on is the one for the troll bridge, Havendale bridge or whatever. Um, and it's just most of these tracks were. Um, draw from a lot of inspiration but one of the biggest inspirations i had for my tracks at least was peter and the wolf my mom used to play that for me when i was a kid all the time yeah. and between peter and the wolf and star wars the john williams stuff like leitmotif i'm a huge mm -hmm. fan of leitmotif i know i know granny is too but like just having this idea of just like a lot of times with games you're making stuff where it's like okay this is the pace of the area this is what we needed to score blah 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 like mm -hmm. in AAA stuff it's probably even more structured as far as like okay this boss encounter then a cutscene, blah 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 but like yeah basically saying here's this encounter that could go on forever like make something that's long enough to keep people's attention but not become grating when it loops etc cetera, etc cetera. like you know it's you don't get that much freedom <laughs> too often so no it was really and also i think um, that danny day the guy at um gcf was like he really gave us some, some quite detailed descriptions even though the game to look at it, you wouldn't think it, but in his head, he had this kind of great imaginary scene that was going on in the game with, you know, monsters and all the rest of it. So he'd, he'd give us really elaborate descriptions about how it would be. So it was great for us to kind of write tunes that he had kind of pictured the, the kind of scenario in his head. So that was really handy. And like, like Danny says, he was very um, good at giving us good direction, you know, but not being too, not, not saying it had to be like this, but he knew, he knew and he heard something that he liked. So he was, he was really informative like that, which is really handy. Sometimes you get people who are very, you know, bland about stuff and they don't really give you very good ideas like this and make it more epic or, right. or 
a bit faster or, you know, they don't really know what they mean, you know, kind of thing. So, and they obviously don't care too. Like these guys, yeah. you could tell they care. And sometimes you work for people and it's like, they need music. They don't care. It's two um, weeks before release. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, for one of the other things is um, because this game was released or, you know, existed in some form earlier, I wanted to know if you guys had an opportunity to actually um, be involved in the evolving beta like actually playing through it and seeing the music being implemented sort of as you went along or if it was kind of out of your hands after the point of writing a little bit i think didn't we? We, had, we had to get we, had, we could play the game before we had um, the game but the music implementation was pretty late yeah uh, so it's one of those things where like if, if if it's like a rhythm game like i'm doing uh necrodancer right now and because the game is based on the music like it's it's all about it like it has to be in there like for right. it to work but like it's i think especially because you know you like to be able to hear it in the game as much as you can but like especially because this game was so you know a i don't know if asynchronous is the right word just nothing you did was t- was tied to some kind of time requirement like uh it was you know we could just play the game and like put the song on our music player and hear it and and that was kind of enough it's right there was nothing kind of one sophisticated of those... in the implementation yeah, and that's just that's just one of those things where it's like, that's just how it is. Like, if you make music for games, you got to be aware you're going to be playing like super alpha versions that might not have the music. And you, that's our job is to like, no, OK, here's the game. You don't get to hear it in game yet, but you still got to make it happen. You still got to do it like it's your job. So I yeah. um, also got to say, like, Danny's is the laziest, laziest man in the world. So getting yep. towards the end of the game, I was kept ringing saying, do you need to do some more music yet? Yeah. No, no, we're good. It's gonna it releases ages away. No, don't worry about right. it. So, <laughs> and then no, I said, no. actually, it's next Tuesday. What? It was like it was like that. So, Daddy, put down the weed pipe. <laughs> it was like let's write a million tunes in five minutes at the end. So it was a bit like that. But that's I mean, how I mean, I'm not the only person who does that. <laughs> <laughs> no, you are. You are definitely really. No, yeah. No, I don't think so. Are. I don't yeah. think so. <laughs> I'm used to schedules and like you know proper proper things also all so, gimmers i think you're just responsible problem. grant i think that's the the difference no here. definitely just not old. no he's no. just used to being a rat in a cage i think ah. um <laughs> but no that that was that was something really notable too man it's like and that was something that actually like um the thing that's crazy about grant is like you can be like hey can you do this in like three days and he's like yeah and then like three days later it's done like with indie games it's so much more like fast and loose and like there's it's hard to get deadlines and stuff and that's just like the nature of it but like he you know it, it was kind of uh i don't know if inspiring is the right word i want to get i don't want to give him that much credit but like of course he did <laughs> just seeing him like just seeing how he worked like a grown-up <laughs> was exactly. kind of like hey wow it's that's a different way to do it so well, i think because i spent so many years as a staff composer you know, it was a great training because you like you get used to go to work in the morning and you you know at nine o'clock you make a start. You know, you sit there and go right. It's time to start writing music. And so, because I did that for so many years, that it, it gives you a really good work ethic. It really carries over. So I can just really, I can just sit down at nine in the morning and say, right, I need to make a start now and do it. And I think and that's that's one of the things about me that I think it's 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 helpful in, in that kind of situation because I can just sit down and get on with it. I don't have to wait for that kind of golden inspiration to come from the hand of the Lord. I can just kind of get stuck in. You know, so I think that training. Yeah, yeah no, work. I mean, I remember listening to John Williams talking about how he spent like two and a half years at Columbia writing an hour of music week, you know, and a whole hour of music every week for two and a half years, which is incredible, really. You know, and writing like a, you know, doing a cowboy one minute and then a, a comedy the next week and then, a you know, a, a, a drama the next week and doing that for all that time. It's, it's a fantastic training to get to learn to do tons of different styles and just to get on with it when you have to get on with it, you know. Yeah, and to not make excuses when you've got work that needs to be right done. yeah yeah i mean that's i mean then you you get down the whole rabbit hole of like you know creativity and whether it can be forced and all that kind of stuff and there's that that's a real deep rabbit hole but like um one of the things about grant that i i really envy and i hope i can get one day is that he just he doesn't can i swear yeah by all means he doesn't fuck with it like he just <laughs> does it like he doesn't fuck around he's just like this is what works and here it is and like I will obsess on tracks for so long over and over again. And just like, you know, think about it for days and days and weeks and just like, it's in my head, what am I going to do? And then I come back to it and then I just like get manic for like three hours and just like finish it. I'm like, yeah, it's good. Like Grant's is like, fuck it, it's done. Like three days, whatever. <laughs> it's good. And it's, but it's, it's awesome. Is that's the thing is it's like, there's not a quality uh, uh, gulf there. Right. And so that's, 
I don't know, man. That's that's something that would be really cool to have someday. I'm not I'm not there yet. Um, but you need to be old like me. It's old age. That's what it is. <laughs> it's, I think it's because you know your time is running out. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. <laughs> <Time> is short. <laughs> uh, wow. Okay. Well, on a parting note, then, um, what have you guys? If if each of you had to pick something that you learned from this particular project, um, I'm not going to ask you if you want to work together again because I think that's pretty obvious. Um, so something that you walked away with this uh, from this project with that you're uh, particularly happy about and Danny, you can go. Uh, I need to get up earlier. That's for certain. Yeah, that is good I need advice. To go, I need to go to bed before the sun comes up. Yeah, because da- like Danny has this kind of stupid thing where he's up all night and it's in bed all day. So it was really frustrating for me when I was like nine in the morning. Let's let's, let's get started. And he was like, you know, to like four o'clock. I don't that you could hear me sleeping is kind of terrifying. <laughs> it's true that's annoying what's my biggest takeaway my biggest takeaway probably is that i need to get better at making midi mock-ups like i'm not i've got a lot better recently like in the last six months or so but i think i because i because in the past i've always known my stuff's been going to, to live orchestra right i had to really worry about midi mock-ups too much I can, I can do it to get so it's good enough to get it in the game or whatever then i know it's going to go to an orchestra it's going to sound great at the end of it but i've had a couple of things recently where it's just got you know because of the money it's just going to be MIDI, the MIDI thing is how it's going to be, you know. So I'm getting better at that now, but I, I spent a long time being very bad at it, I think. So, uh, yeah, that's my big takeaway. I need to, need to get better at that. I, I would even say, to, to piggyback on that, though, like, um, like it was yeah. interesting, hearing so much of Grant's music and seeing it, like, in, uh, in, in the process of being written, too, like, I think I could, I got better at thinking of it in that way. Like, I'm pretty good at MIDI mock-ups. Like, I think I do a pretty decent uh, or orchestral simulation. I mean, it's, I don't know if it's ever going to sound like a real orchestra, but it's pretty close where the layman doesn't know the difference. But like writing with the thought in your head, like this will eventually go to an orchestra makes you write a more convincing orchestration. Because if you think, okay, yeah, I can cheese it with the, uh, this trombone patch or this, this one, everything. And, and, you know, Virtual Sample instruments libraries. don't need to breathe. Right. No, yeah. right. That's, that's, a, that's, isn't that a perfect example, Grant? Like you, he had yeah. to teach me, he would, I would write trumpet lines and brass lines that wouldn't, they would just be legato for, for, for minutes. And he was <laughs> just like, you know, you can't play this, whatever. I never played, <laughs> I played percussion. I played a little guitar, whatever, but I never played brass. So I never had the concept of like, okay, you got to stop here. And, and when I started doing that, when I started putting the brass stuff in, subconsciously it just sounds more real and more convincing and more musical you know because all the music that's ever been written before electronics was written by people who had to play it and so yeah there's kind of this weird like inherent expectation from people that there should be gaps in brass lines and it's it's such a weird subtle thing that i never would have noticed unless someone would have pointed it out so also the other classic mistake people make is that they'll they'll, they'll, they'll take the kind of trumpet ensemble patch which has got like three (laughs) trumpets in it and then they'll play, they'll say it sounds great for, for, for like lead land, but then they'll play chords with it. So you've got nine trumpets playing, you yeah. know, you only get three trumpets in an orchestra. So I used to always say to Danny, remember when you're doing a lead line, you know, yep. use ensemble patch. But when you're doing the chords, you use a single trumpet for the, for the three trumpets for the chord because... You give me a lot of shit for that. <laughs> <laughs> and then going back and listen to it, it sounds like an organ. Like when they're, when you do chords with like the three, it just, it's like, well, of course it yeah, sounds like phasing everywhere. Because everywhere and... this yeah. orchestra has 47 trumpets. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that, that's my takeaway. 